So we talked a lot this week about Josh Gottheimer's gang of nine Democratic lawmakers who threatened to undermine their party's $3.5 trillion budget bill. Now, the Daily Poster is giving us a glimpse into who some of the beneficiaries might have been if the group of Democrats had successfully carried out their assault. Founder of the Daily Poster, David Sirota, notes Exxon lobbyists were caught on tape saying the infrastructure bill was stripped of climate measures. We found the Democrats pushing infrastructure were beneficiaries of millions of dollars from pharma and fossil fuel industries. Friend of the show, David Sirota, joins us to discuss. David, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And so the, the thing that, uh, you know, Josh Kottheimer was attempting to do and what he is claiming to have done is to separate out the bipartisan infrastructure package from the rest of the, uh, the complementary reconciliation effort. And so can you dive into, you know, what the climate implications of that are? Sure. Uh, you know, as you alluded to, the, the uh, an Exxon lobbyist was caught on tape basically saying that the infrastructure bill was stripped of its climate provisions, or, or at least most of them. Uh, and there was all sorts of machinations about how to get that done. But the idea is that the infrastructure bill is the bill that corporate interests like the fossil fuel industry really want. It includes uh, spending uh, sort of on the status quo economy, uh, rebuilding roads, bridges, airports, and the like, all stuff that corporations either aren't bothered by or could be enriched by. So the idea uh, is that what groups like the Chamber of Commerce, uh, industries like the fossil fuel industry want, is for the infrastructure bill to pass uh, and pass alone and not necessarily have the reconciliation budget bill that includes the anti-poverty stuff, uh, cl real climate programs, uh, potentially provisions to allow Medicare to negotiate for lower prices for prescription drugs. And not surprisingly, the group of, of House Democrats uh, that are trying to pass that infrastructure bill alone and effectively kill the budget bill happen to be a handful of Democrats who have gotten a huge amount of money from the very interests that are trying to make that happen. So, for instance, uh, two, two and a half million dollars to these nine or ten Democrats uh, from the fossil fuel industry. Uh, m another million or so uh, from the big pharma, the pharmaceutical companies that don't want uh, a reconciliation bill with provisions in it that would reduce the price of prescription drugs. So, in other words, if you follow the money, you see that these nine uh, or ten Democrats uh, are basically representing their donors, uh, and they're trying to, in, in the process, uh, kill their own party's a budget measure, uh, which their donors do not want. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> they always right. follow the money. Okay, so to yeah. take the kind of counterpoint here, just for, for discussion's sake, sure. um, I mean, I, I, you, you could argue that it is, these Democrats are standing up for the industries that will be crippled under the budget resolution, particularly the energy sector, which would see a massive hit to both, of course, their, their financial uh, you know, bottom line, but the jobs associated with it. Some of these districts, too, would actually, that would have significant impacts in terms of, of hiring because of the industry within the state. I mean, can we give them the benefit of the doubt that there's, there's some, some of this that's ideological in the sense of they're wanting to do what's best for their district? Well, sure. I mean, I think I think it's certainly true that that some of these Democrats, uh, for instance, in, uh, who've gotten a lot of oil money, come from areas where the fossil fuel industry uh, has uh, various infrastructure and various facilities, uh, and they could make the argument that they're simply standing up uh, for existing industries in their district. Now, the problem is, is that the reconciliation bill, the problem with that argument is, is that the reconciliation bill uh, has a lot of spending potentially on converting uh, those industries uh, into industries that actually help address the climate crisis. So, sure, you could argue there's a myopia there. There's a, a short-term myopia. We just want to prop up uh, the existing industries and the existing economy uh, inside of our districts. But that myopia, uh, especially in light of the IPCC report when it comes to climate change, uh, that myopia uh, is a threat, frankly, uh, to the the survival of the human species and the planet. Uh, so there's a convergence here between that myopia 
and the industries themselves that don't want to see their profits reduced at all. And so again, it's not surprising, I know we said surprise, surprise, but it isn't surprising that some of the biggest recipients of this campaign cash are doing everything they can to actually potentially scuttle their own party's bill and their own president's bill. Right, and and three of those nine Democrats were tech, were Texans from South South Texas and along the Mexican border, who where oil and gas is is a major industry. But at the same time, they're pushing for thirty billion dollars to you know what build a dam to protect Galveston from the hurricanes that are resulting, you know from you know from the oil and gas industry in their state, which is you know rapidly making the state un, uninhabitable you know in in our lifetimes or our children's. Uh, lifetimes. Josh Gottheimer, of course, represents North Jersey, which not only has you know a major major kind of Wall Street interest, but also that that's that's home to some of the you know the the the, the giant the big the biggest pharmaceutical companies, and, as well as the executives and, and others who who work around that industry. And so the U.S. Chamber of Commerce actually just tweeted the quiet part out loud this week. Let's put that up. Thanks to the tireless work of the ten House Democrats, we now have a date certain for a vote on the infrastructure bill, and it has been successfully decoupled from the reconstruction bill, I mean, from the reconciliation bill. The entire time, uh, these nine Democrats, which became 10 and then actually became 11 before they, before they collapsed, were, were saying that they just wanted, shovel, quote, shovels in the ground, and they wanted it, quote, immediately. They couldn't wait until October or November to get these shovels into the ground. You know, these projects are ready to go, as we know. It's going to be months before the projects get off the ground, anyway. Uh, but that was their that was their stated concern. We we, we just we, we we these bridges are going to collapse tomorrow if we just don't get out and get this through. And then the chamber says, actually, no. The whole point was to decouple these two so that we can pass the one and then work on killing the other. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. I mean, you've, you've, you, and, and your point about infrastructure, the infrastructure bill and the speed of it, it's not to say that the, that the infrastructure projects, some of them aren't important, but the lead time on infrastructure uh, spending uh, is long, that, it, that it, it, it is an inherently slow process. It's an inherently slow spend. So the argument that we can't wait two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, uh, because we need to get the shovels in the ground, it just, that doesn't make any sense in, in the real world. It's, it's a fake argument. It is a misdirect designed uh, to distract from what's really at play here. These members of Congress, their biggest donors, want that infrastructure bill and they do not want the anti-poverty climate budget bill. That is exactly what's going on here. And the question is ultimately going to be uh, whether or not the budget bill not only remains coupled uh, to the infrastructure bill because of that legislative process, but whether or not the reconciliation bill itself ends up being gutted, ends up being whittled down into nothing. Uh, so that in that situation, uh, Pelosi can say, hey, listen, I followed the sort of no climate, no deal demands. Uh, but in reality, when it comes to the actual details, uh, if you don't actually take the climate change uh, situation seriously and you simply whittle down the reconciliation bill into nothing, Thing, just by calling it a reconciliation bill doesn't mean it's a win. The details will, ha will, be, will determine whether it's a victory or not. Right. David, thank you so much for joining us, and we will have more Rising for you right after this.